For this pattern, I'm starting with a size 14 fire hole nymph hook. They're heavy and can run a little big, so this is close to a size 12 if you're using a different brand. With your tying thread, start taking wraps an eye length behind the eye of the hook and form a nice smooth thread base to the bend of the hook. Take 10 or so pheasant tail fibers and tear them from the stem. If you line up the tips and hold tightly while ripping them off the feather, you can keep them aligned. Measure about a hook's shank for the tail and angle them against the side of the hook facing you. As you take wraps, the pheasant tail will want to rotate towards the top of the hook shank. Adjust the tail to your liking and secure it in with a few more wraps. There are many variations on this pattern, and this is just one of the ways I tie them. Once the tail is secure, break off a 3 inch section of wire. I like red ultra wire and small for this size fly. Tie in the wire on the side facing you, and make sure the wire doesn't get tangled up in the rest of the pheasant tail fibers. Fold down the pheasant tail so it faces back towards the tail of the fly, and take wraps rearward over both the wire and the pheasant tail. Take wraps to smooth out the base all the way up to the first tie-in point and end with your thread there. If you're using a rotary vise, you can do a few half hitches to secure the thread while we wrap the abdomen. Grab hold of the pheasant tail fibers and take touching wraps around the hook to form a segmented abdomen. Don't pull too tightly or you might break the fibers. And remember which way you turn this section because we'll go around the opposite way for the ribbing. Take a few wraps with your thread to secure the pheasant tail. Then snip off the excess fibers. Some patterns have you use this leftover pheasant tail to form the thorax, but I'll tie in new pheasant tail fibers for this particular pattern. Grab your wire and take evenly spaced wraps, making sure to go in the opposite direction than the pheasant tail. Once you reach your thread, take a few wraps to secure the wire, then helicopter off the waist.
Line up another 7 to 10 pheasant tail fibers and trim the tips to get them flush. With the dull, darker sides facing up, tie in the fibers, doing your best to keep them contiguous against each other and spaced out on the top of the hook shank. Again, if you start with the fibers against the side of the hook facing you, the friction from the thread will move the fibers up to the top of the fly. Take wraps to make a clean base and end with your thread at the tie-in point. Take a peacock curl or two and snip off an inch or so of the brittle tips. Then tie in your hurl and end with your tying thread by the eye of the hook. Trim any stray peacock fibers, but no need to obsess too much as this section will be covered up. Carefully take touching wraps with your peacock curl. Too much tension and these thinner stems will want to break. Take wraps up a little behind the eye, leaving just enough room for a thread wrapped head. With your thread, take a few wraps to secure the peacock and snip off the excess. I tried ripping off the hurl and ended up unraveling it a bit. It's definitely safer to trim with scissors at this point. Prepare a partridge feather by trimming off about a centimeter of fibers from the tip, cutting just at the stem and not trimming any barbs. Then trim off the base, leaving a couple of millimeters for a tie-in point. Position the partridge on the peacock thorax and tie in the stem, doing your best to keep the feather centered. Once it's positioned nicely, trim off any excess partridge stem. Fold the pheasant tail over the partridge wings. It's important to keep the pheasant tail fibers flush against each other. Take wraps around the pheasant tail behind the eye of the hook. Take your time since this part can be a little finicky. You can also gently pull up the pheasant tail after a few thread wraps to make sure you're not crowding the eye of the hook.
snip off the excess pheasant tail, and end with a five turn whip finish. Cut your thread and make one final set of adjustments. We're going to glue down the thorax so this is your last chance to adjust this part of the fly. Take a single drop of UV resin, either from a small applicator or with a bobbin, and coat the pheasant tail thorax. I like to soak this part and form a base before I harden it. When you're happy with the coverage, flash the resin with UV light to cure and harden. Take one last drop of resin and try to form a nice round blob. If you get the surface tension just right, you'll have a perfectly bulbous thorax. Blast it one final time with a UV flashlight, and we're finished! This pattern is unweighted, so you can fish it as an emerger on a swing, or let it drop slowly in some still water, or even tie it in a tandem rig and let it flutter while a heavier fly sinks it down. Pheasant tail patterns really work just about everywhere and imitate a variety of aquatic insects. Give this one a shot and let me know what you think in the comments.